Good morning, church. It is Sunday, November 22nd. It's already Thanksgiving this week, and it came up so fast. I can't believe it's already here. Um, our centering words this week are, God calls us to be a grateful people in all the seasons of our lives. This week, uh, we attended the Charge Conference for our area, which is eight churches in the Glendale, Burbank, um, La Cunada, La Cristina, us, and um, Tahunga. And we meet once a year now to go over some of our reports, and every church gave a five-minute presentation, um, which ours was a beautiful slideshow this year that uh, Jean and Molly put together. So thank you to both of them for that. I was very proud of that. I want to thank everybody who attended. It was a Zoom meeting, and it was great to have so many of our CVUMC people with us. Um, if you have any questions about it, let us know. You'll be hearing more about it during the end of the year when we send out all the reports. I do want to say we did um, lift up and certify our certified lay minister, Jean Lavieri. So thank you to Jean. Um, we are so blessed to have her with us, and it was a joy to be able to share that um, confirmation with her. The prayer team will be meeting again this Tuesday at 6.30. Um, so if you keep sending in your prayers, um, they will lift them up. Uh, our offering and our pledges are still coming in. You're still faithfully giving, and we appreciate that. This week especially, we are thankful for what we do have. And so um, we can remember that when we give our, our offering and our pledges this week. A youth group, I'm going to try to Zoom next weekend, so watch for an email about that. Um, I think we're going to go back to Zooming since everything is uh, seems to be getting a little bit worse. Next Saturday, uh, which is November 28th, um, is our day for the Bailey and Learning Works Giving Day um, from 9 to 1 o'clock. Uh, there are no more ornaments left from the tree, so if you still would like to give some money and you want to uh, talk to Connie about that, she can tell you the other things that, that we're going to be doing. But if you can, please bring your wrapped gift back next week, and we'll get that for Connie. She has to have them back by December 6th, so if you need a little more time, just let her know and she'll arrange for you to either get it picked up or dropped off at her house. Now, the surprise for all the kids, the kids all around, everyone want to come over right now? The Del Castillo family has graciously bought chocolate advent calendars this year. I know how much you all love them. It's such a great tradition here at CVUMC. So next Saturday, if you'd like to come by and pick yours up, we'll have them with us. Um, you can come by and we'll give them to you, or if you want to contact Debbie or I and uh, pick a time. We can also bring them out to your car if you feel safer doing that. Um, if you can't come let us know too, and we'll figure out um, a time or a way that you can get them because we really would love to have all the children and the youth of the church um, get their advent calendar. And again, please, thank you so much to Alan and Kathy um, for generously getting these for all of our children. So with Thanksgiving this week, um, I think we want to think about all the things that we do have. I know it's a little different than what we've had before, but we're still grateful. We're still thankful. And there's a lot of things that we can be thankful for. So I wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving. Be safe and we'll see you soon. This little light of mine This is Ricky from church doing my part for the Bailey Center. Uh, so good to see people coming out for the Bailey Center. Uh, I want to encourage you to do that. That's, you know, helping people. Random acts of kindness. That's what the world should be about. And let's hope that the uh, future is about random acts of kindness. It's so good to be in this room. I feel the love in this room. And uh, I just can't wait till we're able to get back together and worship again together. 
So I just want everybody to have a wonderful week and uh, continued prayers for everyone who needs it. And uh, just be the best you can be. Random acts of kindness. That's what it's all about. I love you guys. Let it shine. Sunday, Sunday morning, November 22nd, before uh, Thanksgiving. I'm purposefully bringing my grapevine into view to celebrate uh, the bounty of harvest that I got one bunch of grapes from this this summer, but each one was delicious. I'm grateful for the time I had in my garden this summer and looking forward to winter crops. Um, as we look forward to our week, we have prayer concerns for those near and dear to us. We want to start um, with Gregory Stupakis. Give him hope and guidance as he starts to shape uh, new plans for his life. Uh, God, lead him towards you. We pray for those who are um, struggling with diseases. Um, 
with cancer who are receiving treatments, keep them, keep them comfortable, um, keep them close to you, God. And specifically, Kathy Garrett's longtime friend, Jean, uh, has a son-in-law, Ron, who is um, finding that the multiple myeloma um, that he's been uh, treating in his body has manifested in new places. So we, we pray for him, comfort, and whatever healing is possible. And Kathy's friend, Jean, daughter, has also had a heart trouble in the past, so we pray for a strong heart for her. We give thanks for um, Wayne's triumph over cancer and his diligence with treatments and the outcome looking very good that Wayne is cancer free. We um, pray also for my Aunt Nanette in Connecticut and her, her seven children uh, as they are nearing their their goodbye to her uh, as her life with us is is dwindling. We're not sure of the time, but she's always been a peaceful, kind person. So surround her with what she has provided us all these years. I pray for those grieving, uh, especially Norma, who um, lost her daughter um, and we pray that she feels your comfort God in her grief we give thanks for all all of the health care workers working um, extra extra time high risk high numbers in hospitals keep keep them safe give them strength when they can rest let their time be restful and renewing and thank you for all these people who are um, being your presence among us God and so as we move into a, a different kind of holiday season um, where in the past we are comforted by traditions by activities and physical presence of loved ones, um, we will need a new kind of comfort. It will need to come in another form. Um, let, us, let us be confident that uh, in perhaps the absence of our loved ones, we uh, have the knowledge that we are keeping each other safe and putting less of a burden on the health care workers uh, and God in these new empty spaces may we meet you and I ask this in Jesus name Amen
And now, let us be in an attitude of prayer and silent meditation. O God of grace and God of glory, as we gather this morning for worship, may you hear our words and expressions for the gratitude we feel for all that you have done for us. You have given yourself to us in Jesus. You have given us your life. You have loved us and you have been gracious to us throughout each day and each night. You have poured out the blessings of life upon us. You have given us food to eat, clothes to wear, and friends and family who love us. You have filled our lives with purpose and meaning and have given us an open heaven and the ability to speak to you anytime in prayer. You have given us your spirit, your wisdom, your guidance. Our hearts overflow with all the good things you have given us. And so we, as your people, thank you. We are eternally grateful to you. This we pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes to us from Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is the Lord that made us, and we are the Lord's. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to the Lord. Bless the Lord's name. For the Lord is good. The Lord's steadfast love endures forever. And the Lord's faithfulness to all generations. The word of God for the people of God.
it is interesting to note that it wasn't until we were at war, the Civil War to be exact, that our Thanksgiving holiday was officially recognized by Congress. It had started in the small Plymouth colony in 1621 when the English pilgrims feasted with members of the Wampanoag Indians who brought gifts of food as a gesture of goodwill. At the end of the American Civil War, President Abraham Lincoln proclaimed the last Thursday in November, Thanksgiving. The year was 1863, and it took still another 40 years, the early 1900s, before the tradition really caught on. Today, Thanksgiving is a holiday full of sports, family reunions, and delicious food. But did you know, a realistic historical picture of Thanksgiving was born out of adversity and difficult times. Many of the greatest expressions of Thanksgiving have occurred under circumstances so debilitating, one wonders why people give thanks. You know, it's a paradox that in times of plenty, we sometimes become indifferent. The smallest gifts are overlooked and unappreciated, but let hard times come and the threat that these gifts will be taken from us and we are jolted into sudden recognition and gratitude. So this morning I would like to reflect on what are the characteristics of a truly grateful people? I would like to offer three observations and answer to that question. The first characteristic of a truly grateful people is remembrance. When we are truly grateful, we are slow to forget what made us grateful. Our reading this morning is from the book of Psalms. In all, there are 150 Psalms, which can be categorized into prayers of help, hymns, royal hymns, and songs of thanksgiving. Psalm 100 falls into the last category. It is a song of thanksgiving and there is no mention of deliverance from hardships. Most of the Thanksgiving Psalms give an account of some great distress, but not Psalm 100. The author wishes for the worshiper to give a spirit of great thanksgiving. The second characteristic of a truly grateful people is humility. When we are truly grateful, we humbly confess that we are indebted to God, that we belong to God, and that we are not our own. Let's look at the psalm again. In the first two verses, there is a call that goes out to all the earth to come and worship. Worship the Lord with gladness. In the next two verses, the psalmist calls upon the world to recognize that it is God who has made us, that we are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. The third characteristic of being a truly grateful people is the recognition of the goodness of God. When we are truly grateful, we come to understand that God's mercies endure forever. This is the central focus of Psalm 100. When the congregation enters the gates of the temple and comes into the sanctuary together, they confess that there will be no end to the love of God. The late 
Lutheran pastor Dietrich Bonhoeffer was imprisoned in 1943 for his political and Christian opposition to the Nazi regime. Bonhoeffer understood Thanksgiving. For two years, he was in prison at a time when the war was raging all around him. On the day of Bonhoeffer's sentencing, he conducted a service for the other prisoners. One of the prisoners who survived wrote these words, I quote, Bonhoeffer always seemed to me to spread an atmosphere of happiness and joy over the least incident and profound gratitude for the mere fact that he was alive. He was one of the very few persons I have ever met for whom God was real and always near. On Sunday, April 8th, 1945, Pastor Bonhoeffer conducted a little service of worship and spoke to us in a way that went to the heart of all of us. He found just the right words to express the spirit of our imprisonment and the thoughts and resolutions it had brought to us. He had hardly ended his last prayer when the door opened and two civilians entered. They said, Prisoner Bonhoeffer, come with us. That had only one meaning for all prisoners, the gallows. We said goodbye to him. He took me aside and whispered in my ear, this is the end, but for me, it is the beginning of life, end quote. And the following day, Dietrich Bonhoeffer lost his life in Flossenburg. The beginning of life. How is it that Bonhoeffer worshiped God in a, in a Gestapo prison with the gallows in view? To those that knew him, they would say he understood the meaning of thanksgiving. Out of great suffering have come the greatest expressions of gratitude. And so I suggest to you this morning that in the midst of challenges in life and in the world, May those times and moments give us all the more reason to celebrate Thanksgiving in remembrance, humility, and with the understanding that God is good and God's mercies endure forever. Amen. Sun.
And now as we go forth into this new day, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. We'll need strength for the journey. journey